so good. God is so good. God is so good. I want to thank God for another night. I want to thank God for every one of you. And then I want to thank God for this very capable and qualified pastor, Pastor Lonnie Fry. Somebody say amen. Amen. There's nothing around us as well. Amen. Thank you, my wife, for 40 years. Thank God for her. Amen. To those that came from Atlanta City. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then I want to thank God for all the preachers and for all the singers tonight and just for every one of you. Look to your name and say, it's just good to be here. Yes, it is. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we say thank you. We ask that you be with us. Lead us and guide us. And the Lord, allow your word to touch some hearts. Allow your word to bring about growth and development in the minds of everyone in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Philippians 2 and 5, Paul is writing. Philippians 2 and 5, he's writing from a Roman jail. But he's writing to bring about encouragement, but he's also trying to let us know something. That even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of controversy, even in the midst of trouble, yet there is joy on the inside. It is not because of him, but it's based upon the premise of his relationship with God. Philippians 2 and 5 begins to read as follows. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And on last night we talked about how to renew your mind. How to renew your mind. And on last night we said that your mind is the seat of understanding, reasoning, and thinking. The seat of understanding, reasoning, and thinking. And then also on last night we said that the mind brings about what is commonly called mental pictures and ideas passing intentionally and unintentionally through your conscience, which is your seat of values. And then we talked about on last night that if you wanted to renew your mind, you have to have a strong, abiding love for God's Word. Amen. And under that, we said as well, don't allow worryation to take you off focus. Amen. Don't allow worryation, people, places, or things to take you off focus. And tonight, we're coming back still dealing with this concept how to renew your mind. And number two is this. If I'm going to renew my mind, I must discipline my intellect. If I'm going to renew my mind, I must discipline. Now that word discipline means to train. That word discipline also denotes uh, rehearsing. That word discipline also denotes Practicing. Just as these singers stood up here tonight and allowed the Lord to use them, that just did not come by osmosis, but that came by rehearsal. That came by memorization. That came by studying. That came by taking time out of schedules to get involved in the music. So even with that requires work, practice, and rehearsal. So if we're going to renew our minds, we've got to learn how to discipline or train our intellect. Now, the intellect, and we all have it, wants to be in charge. No doubt about it. Your intellect wants to be in charge. Matter of fact, pride rests inside of your intellect. And pride is nothing but no more than saying, I want things the way I want it because I'm grown. And because I'm grown, you don't tell me I do what I want when I want to do. So pride rests in your intellect. But 
but the intellect cannot pass information without permission. The intellect cannot pass on information without permission of your will. W-I-L-L. And your will is the chairman of the board. Your will denotes your choice. Your will denotes what you want to do, when you want to do it, and where you want to do it. So now, it gets to another point that we need to really examine. If we're going to discipline our intellect, we've got to take out the negative and replace it with that which is spiritual. I didn't say with that which is positive. I said with that which is spiritual. So you got to take out the jump and replace it with that which is spiritual. In other words, it's just like a trash can. If you allow the trash to stay in the house in the summertime and the windows are closed before you know it, when you come home, there's going to be a smell. There's going to be an uncomfortable odor inside of your house. So then you've got to go and empty the trash. Look to your neighbor and say, you need to empty your trash. <laughs> now, there are three ways. There are three ways that we learn how to reason. And, and then we need to understand something else. What is reason? Uh, that uh, a motive for action or belief. Your reason is a motive for action or belief. And see, if you want to reason, there are three ways. The first thing you should do, you got to know something. Through, your, through our own understanding. A lot of times we reason through our own understanding. And you know, most of the time, our own understanding gets us in trouble. So you got to reject that. Because sometimes your own understanding is not based upon the premise of that which is spiritual, but sometimes your own understanding is intermingled with pride, bitterness, and jealousy. So the old understanding doesn't work all the time. And then you need the wisdom of man. That's another element of reasoning. But then you deal with what is commonly called philosophies and psychology and, and all of that. And listen, there's so much controversy concerning this school of thought or that avenue of school of thought. And that gets you in trouble too. So you got to reject that as well. But then the last thing that you want to look at, and this is what you can take to the bank. I call it the wisdom of God. See, knowledge is gathering of information. But wisdom is the unfolding of the information that has been gathered. And I'm not talking about just natural wisdom. I'm talking about spiritual wisdom that comes directly from God. So in all your ways, you've got to acknowledge him. Not in some ways, not in a little bit of ways, but in all your ways. What do you say, preacher? Before you make a major decision, make sure you call on God. Before you even plan a trip, make sure you acknowledge God. And that before you leave, you make sure that God is in your presence. Now, a mind that is not renewed begins to roam. A mind that is not renewed begins to roam over here, over there, back yonder, upstairs, downstairs. You are messed up. In other words, you become like the children of Israel. It took them many, many years to get to the promised land because of their disobedience. Pride was inside of them. God spoke to them and God used Moses to speak to them. 80 years of preparation for Moses, for 40 years of leadership, and even with all of that, they still messed up. Some theologians have told us that it only took about 24 days to get that, but they were going around in circles. 
circles. And a lot of us, we're going around in circles. We're not making any progress. We're not successful because we want to do what we want to do, when we want to do. And we'll take God and say, God, you sit down. I got this. But now, when did you think that you became God? Some people will call that anthropomorphism. And that trouble more isn't the notes that you're trying to bring God down to your level. And once you bring God down to your level, then the concept of humanism will creep inside. And before you know it, you think that you're God. Look to your name and say, not so. So you got to renew the mind by changing your pattern of thinking. You gotta renew your mind by changing your pattern of thinking. And see, the church of Philippi, they listened, they appreciated what Paul was saying, but Paul told some of them, said, listen, some of you are caught up in vain glory. Some of you are caught up in, you're puffed up in, you're beginning to smell yourself. And that's why I said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And see, if you want to have the mind of Christ Jesus, number one, you've got to learn how to prioritize. What do you mean, preach about prioritizing? Making God first. Amen. Let me just stop right there. What place is God in your life right now? Don't say nothing, please, but I want you to lie in church. What place does God have in your life? So if you want to renew your mind, you've got to understand the mechanisms of a reasoning, but then you've got to understand what prioritizing is. You can't make God fifth place. You can't make God tenth place and think God's going to do a great work in your life. It just don't happen. God says, put me first. That's right. And he should, he should be first. That's right. Because if he wakes us up every morning. If he helps us when we can't help ourselves. If he's become a bridge over troubled water. And if he's fed you when you couldn't feed yourself. You shouldn't you make him first place? But the answer, and you ask me later on, what place is God in your life? So prioritizing is of utmost importance. And then after prioritizing, we want to shift to another terminology, which is called perspective. And perspective is seeing yourself delivered. Perspective is seeing yourself healed. Perspective is seeing yourself as an overcomer, even before you get there. But in order for that to take place, the element of motivation, which is a drive and a focus, needs to be inside of the rhythmic phrasing of what you are and what you see. So prioritizing is one thing. Perspective is another thing. But then you've got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Amen. And that's as far as we've got so modern now that we don't want to talk about sanctification. We don't want to talk about being filled with the Holy Ghost. But I'm here to let you know that we got to go back to the old times. We've got to lay out the Holy Ghost. we got to fast and we got to pray. And all of these elements you need to have. And see, the mind is the control tower of your character, your conduct, and your conversation. Your mind is the control tower of your character, which is your behavior. When you are not in church, how do you act? Your conduct. When folks see you, are you memorable? Do you know how to speak to folks? Are you rolling your eyes and what Do you know how to be nice to folks? Because see, listen, you can more folk with honey than you can with soul. And then your conversation should be that which is representative 
of the God that you sent. Come on now. Because when we were in the well, we had a conversation which was representation yes, of the right. devil that we yes, served. Now y'all don't want to talk about it. If some of you right now, if somebody rub you the wrong way, you'll cuss it at me. No, 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 say nothing. Ain't gonna be the lie that you you know it. So we talking about how to renew your mind. Your mind controls your body, and your will controls your mind. Your mind controls your body and your will controls your mind. So now we're talking about how to renew our minds. Paul was locked up in jail. And listen, even when he was in jail, Paul talked about the joy of the Lord. Even when he was locked up in sadness and going through, he was still trying to help somebody. Now let's reverse that position. When you're going through trials and tribulations, and when the doctors have given you some reports that is not so nice and not so calmly, how do you react? Do you get into a mode of sadness and being morbid and being melancholy and gloominess knocks upon the door of your mindset? Or yet in the midst of negativity, can you still have joy? And let me tell you something. That if you're going to learn how to discipline your intellect, you've got to train yourself under the auspices of God and under revelatory knowledge how to have joy when all hell is right inside of you. Because he wants you to 
In other words, God wants you under the auspices of his umbrella. God wants to lead you and direct you, and God is tired of you telling him, God, I got this. And God knows that you don't have it, and you don't know it too, but because you want to be stubborn and asinine, you want to do what you want to do. God said, ball and by tonight to let you know that you got to stop that mentality. you got to stop that mindset and realize that if it had not been for God, you wouldn't be living up to this point. From birth up to this point in your life, all of us should have been gone a long time ago. Hey, hey. Listen, this ain't no time about trying to keep me. Listen, ain't nothing but the grace of God that gives me. Ain't nothing but the grace of God that gives you. And if we had not been for the Lord on our side, where we We've got to get past self. Yeah. We get it. We 
got to get past the little reputations that we think we had. I'm going to tell you something else. When Jesus came down from the balconies of glory, he came as a servant. He came humble. And not only that, but he knew why he was coming. He knew that he was coming to die. And listen, God allowed us into this world. And once we accepted Christ as personal Savior, you know. And if you don't know, you know as tonight, you got to surrender some things. you got to die to some things. Because if you don't surrender and you don't die to some things, those things will control you. They will dominate you. And they will mess you up. How do we never walk? And listen, when you become a servant and when you become humble, then you ain't got to let nobody bust you upside the head. No, 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 I ain't talking about that kind of you. No, 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 no. You, you can't stand for that. I ain't got nobody do that to me. Somebody say, man. Amen. But I'm talking about the kind of humility that will be nice to some folk and will say, listen, you did that this time, but you're not going to do that. Oh, and, and, and I see the love inside of you. I see the potential, but I also see the negative stuff inside of you. That's why it's not against me. And that's why you've got to know how to deal with not only people, but deal with yourself. And what some psychiatrists might call that group dynamics. You've got to understand what group dynamics are. And when you have a church, you've got to realize you have a group of people. And anytime you have a group of people, you want to have some that's for the gospel. You want to have some that's not for the gospel. You want to have some that will follow leadership. And you want to have some that are critical of leadership. <laughs> but then you've got to also understand that you've got to wait your turn. And a lot of times we want to rise up. But you don't want to put no time in. You don't want to do no work. You don't want to get, get down to the root of the matter. You got to work. You got to scuffle. You got to give up some things. So much is given, much is required. And some of you talking about, I don't want this and I don't want that. And God said, You ain't getting nothing because you ain't ready. Wait your turn. Sit down and be quiet. And learn. Because when he came, he didn't come looking for a rep. He didn't try to like, look at me, I'm this and I'm that. No, 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 no. He, he talked about his omniqualities. And there's a word in theology called kenosis. And the word kenosis means that he emptied himself of some of his attributes and some of his qualities. That he might be an example for you and I sitting here today. And that's why Jesus was all in the flesh. So he might become an example for some of us sitting in this place. And let me tell you something. You want to get out of a situation. You want to start doing better. You want to live better than you ever had. You want real success. My solution to you is start following Jesus. And don't allow the distractions of life to mess with you. Don't allow the distractions of life. And that's where most of us mess up. Little distractions will take us off focus. People with bad attitudes will take us from God. People that mean no good will get us stop, will stop us from going to Sunday school. I would, listen, I want to take a poll today. How many of y'all come to Sunday school? Raise your hand. Don't lie. Sometimes. That's right. That's right. Now, some of you didn't raise your hand up. So you need to go to Sunday school. You know, when we get grown, we feel this stuff. I don't need that. I know them stories already. I know what John 3.16 is. But let me ask you a question. If you know what John 3.16 is, do you know the cause of John 3.16? Think about that. I know what John 3.16 is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, why is he stating that? Let me tell you something. You can't understand John 3.16 until you understand Genesis 3.15 because it all connects one with another. The Bible is parallel. The Old Testament conceals, but the New Testament reveals. And it's all connected one with another. So if you really want to understand John 3.16, you've got to go back to the fall of man. Somebody say, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. That's the only way you're You can't listen. You don't have an idea of what John 3.16 is until you examine the creation, until you examine the fall of man. They ain't got a clue of what it is. They ain't got a clue. So you need to come to Sunday school. And no, no, no disrespect. No ill deserved mentally. 
have to work. And I like what the sister came gave a testimony and said she wanted to come to church, but she got to work. And listen, God knows you got to work, but do what you can. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and when you're sincere, God will go to that boss and tell that boss, listen, you need to let this child, this lady, come to church on Sunday. And when you're nice about it, I guarantee you, keep on praying and God will make the way for you. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. How many of you love him? Raise your hand tonight. How many of you really, really love him? And he loves every one of you in this place. But he wants realness in your life. Change your vocabulary. Stop talking about how rough it is, how difficult it is. If you woke up this morning, that's enough right there. How many of y'all woke up this morning? Look to your neighbor and say, did you wake up this morning? Wow, we. So now, if you woke up this morning, that makes me know, and you should know how blessed you are. And that's the cause of how to renew your mind, to be thankful to God, and to realize that you are your own cheerleader in the body of Christ, because you can't wait for folk to encourage you. You got to encourage yourself and get up in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up. I thank you for living. Starting me on my way. At this time, if there be one that stands in the need of prayer, I want you to come down right now because prayer changes things. Is there one that stands in the need of prayer? Prayer changes things. A problem solver, a heavy little child. 